Okay, everybody, welcome to University of Montana Geo 572 Advanced Hydrogeology Lecture. And today we're gonna take a bit of a departure and I'm gonna do a lecture on some basic GIS um, in order for us to get some tools to make our grid that we need to for the Lolo project. So uh, today what we're gonna do is we're going to um, use QGIS. We're going to um, take the geologic data file that CAM's using um, for the project area. And um, we're going to extract only the, uh, only the polygons of geology that we think are active in the groundwater system. So here, you know, uh, top gear, top tip, it's probably mostly the, the alluvial system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load the geology. I'm going to essentially uh, merge all the, um, all the alluvial uh, systems. And then I'm going to, um, export that as a shapefile. We can use that shapefile then as a mask. Um, and, and basically we'll make a rectangular grid for our mod flow file. And we'll use the shapefile mask to say, hey, only these cells that fall within this shapefile will be active, right? And we can do that with iBound. So, there, so the first trick is we gotta do three, three things. First, we gotta, we gotta make this shapefile. We gotta load it into uh, Python. And then we got to intersect it with our mod flow grid. All right, so the first part is just creating the shape file and I'm gonna work on that today. And then I have a, a notebook example showing you how to intersect that with your mod flow grid and then set I bound from, from that, okay? So, uh, so let's get started. So I'm gonna use a program called QGIS. Um, any, uh, a lot of this can be done with other GIS System. So if you have Arc on your computer, you're free to use Arc. Um, I use Q because um, I don't have an Arc license. I don't feel like paying $30,000 a year for an Arc license and Q does a lot of the stuff I need to do. Um, so QGIS is free. You guys can download it and install it on your machines, no problem, and you can have it in perpetuity. And, and let me just tell you, that's a good idea to learn QGIS because in the future, you may or may not have access to ARC, and Q can be used to do a lot of these uh, simple manipulations. Everything I'm doing right now can also be done in Python itself. There's plenty of GIS functionality in Python, but um, quick and dirty, we can do it in QGIS. All right, so um, uh, let's start off. I'm gonna um, share my, my QGIS screen. And, uh, and uh, right now, this is a, uh, a map um, that basically just has a raster digital elevation model of uh, Lolo Creek coming into the Bitterroot River. And I can zoom out here and, uh, and uh, we can sort of look at a bigger scale. So here's the Bitterroot Mountains, here's Lolo Creek, here's the Missoula Valley, Sapphire Mountains, right? And uh, I'm not gonna get into how I got this uh, DEM made a hill shade and colored it. There's plenty of online tutorials for that, but um, essentially I, I downloaded all of this. There's a easy plugin that just downloads um, uh, these DEMs for your area right in QGIS, but at any rate, just enough to give us some background and be able to locate. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is open up our geology file. These will be in the uh, you can download all these files um, uh, from Moodle, all right? And these are from CAM's work. So uh, over here in QGIS, um, there's a file explorer, right? And it allows me to, uh, to find files and to easily open them. Let me, let me give you just a little tutorial. Um, th this uh, set down here, these are the layers that are available for me to map. All right, and right now I've got the Hillshade um, and this merged uh, DEM. Don't worry too much about it. Um, 
Uh, I've also got the ability to plot a really coarse hydrologic network uh, downloaded from the USGS. Um, and then I've also got uh, USGS gauges. So here's the location of gauges in 2011. These are just shape files that I have. You don't need them, all right? They just help us sort of figure out where we're at. And I also have snow tell sites. Don't worry about that either. Um, all right, so, so these are the layers that I have available to open here. Um, these are, this is a browser that allows me to navigate to new files to open if I want. And these here are um, bookmarks, spatial bookmarks for other maps that I've made. Um, you don't need them and you don't need to worry about them, all right? There's a bunch of buttons up here and then there's a bunch of um, above uh, in QGIS. In fact, I'm gonna pause recording and I'm gonna, I'm gonna change how I'm sharing because you can't see my QGIS menus, um, I don't think, and, and there's a lot of stuff in there that we're gonna use. So uh, let me pause recording and then I'll uh, change the share. Or actually, I, I'll just do this. I'm gonna stop the share now. And then I'm gonna just share my whole desktop. Okay, now I think you should see um, this desktop, I hope. Uh, so let me stop share. Let me make sure I'm sharing the desktop I wanna, I wanna share. Desktop one, share. Uh, I hope I'm sharing this um, desktop. Okay. So, um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is load the geology data file. And uh, we're gonna do that by um, navigating to it. You're gonna download it, you're gonna put it somewhere for me. I've put it uh, in this directory class. Geo 572 2020 final project Lolo GIS. And here is this um, study area geology, and you'll see this file study area.shape. Now, shape file has a bunch of different files associated with it. Anytime you're uh, looking at a shape file, it's going to have a bunch of different files. The actual shape file itself has this .shp extension. So to open it in QGIS, it's as simple as double clicking on that file, and you'll see that uh, a shape file loaded. Now, one of the important things here for us is that we need to set the spatial reference of this, of, of this, of this file, and we're also going to change the way it's displayed. So I can uh, open up the properties of the file by double clicking down here. The first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to look here in the information. And uh, it's going to tell me sort of what the coordinate reference system of the file is natively. All right. And this is WGS 84. All right. Don't worry uh, too much. Well, yes, this is important. Um, and another important thing is this EPSG code 3857. We're going to use these EPSG EPSG codes later. All right, so this is uh, the location of the file. It tells you what kind. It's an Esri shape file. It's a polygon file. That's the kind of shapes it has um, and uh, its coordinate reference system. What I want to do is I'm, I'm going to force this to be in the project coordinate reference system. Um, and that is uh, um, NAD 83, 2011 zone 12 north. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna hit okay. Oh, that didn't work. Um, I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna go to QGIS preferences. CRS. Okay. 
When a new layer is created, use project CRS. Uh, that's what I want to do. I'm going to hit OK. Uh, let me look. What's our general project? CRS. Okay, let's let's try this now. So now let's load this puppy. Okay, I'm gonna look at this now. Pseudo Mercator. Cancel. Huh. Project properties. We're going to uh, we're going to change the CRS within the project. All right. So um, so what I've done here is made sure that our all the projection here, and this is really important. Um, oh, let me get rid of this one. Um, uh, by going to project properties, we can see what the coordinate reference system is for us. And it is this guy, NAD 1983, 2011 UTM zone 12 North. And the EPSG code is 102059. UTM is what we call a projected coordinate system. It essentially assumes a flat earth and everything is done in these square planar um, coordinates and the, the units are meters. So it just makes it really easy for us to, to make model grids and stuff in a, assu assuming a square planar earth when we're using a square planar coordinate system. So UTM 12 North is what we're using. Um, and this EPSG is, is good. All right. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is change how we're looking at the symbology on our, um, on our webs, uh, uh, you know, on our, um, file here. Um, so right now it's under single symbol. I'm going to make it, uh, categorized, all right, symbol, I'm going to say, okay, symbol fill, uh, I'm going to change this opacity to 40% or something like that, okay, and then the next thing I got to do, so I'm on categorized, I'm going to tell it what column to categorize on, and MBMG code is the geology code, so I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to hit classify. And what you see is now there's a whole bunch of symbols. They get different shapes. And I can hit apply. I can hit OK. And now you'll see here's our geology. And things are have different colors. And, um, and they're somewhat translucent so that we can see the topography underneath. OK, now I'm going to do uh, something uh, here. I'm going to zoom in on our file. And remember the alluvium is what we want to look at. So um, this uh, arrow with an I means information or query. So I can check this guy. I can click on him. And uh, I have to have the layer, study area geology, highlighted down here. And then when I click on him, they'll give me information under my cursor. So over here, we can look at a few things. And one thing is that the MBMG code is QAL, quaternary alluvium. All right. The other ones that are, are important that we might want to look at, let's, what are these guys over here? Uh, um, QAT, Quaternary Terrace. So these blue ones here are Quaternary Alluvium. We zoom in here, 
Quaternary Terrace. All right, Quaternary Terrace. And then there's these pink ones coming in, QAO. These are like outside alluvium. All right, these are alluvium in these smaller branches. So these are all the sort of layers of alluvium that I think would be active for our groundwater model in here. So what I would like to do is just extract those layers. So remember these symbols, write them down. QAO, QAL, and QAT. Because now what we're gonna do is what's called a spatial query. We're only gonna, we're just gonna keep the values that we want that are uh, QAL, QAT, and QAO. So here's how I do that. I'm going to double click on study area geology. Under here, under uh, source, all right, there's this uh, query builder. All right? and, and when I click this, it allows me to, uh, to do what's called a spatial query, all right? So first of all, I'm going to query on the MBMG code. All right, and I want only the values of QAL, QAT, and QA, QAO. So um, one way you can search on this is you can come up here, you can highlight MBMG code, and you can say, show me all the values. If you have a huge data set, it can take a long time to show these values. We don't have such a big one, so it happens almost instantaneously. And you see QAO, QAL, QAT, right? These are our these are our things that we want to highlight, all right? So now I'm going to make an SQL expression, and that is MBMG code is in QAL, QAO, QAT, all right? This is SQL, whole other language, big time database language, but all it says is, find places where MBMG code is in this vector, QAL, QAO, QAT. Now I can test it. The where clause returned 46 rows. Okay, looks good. So hit okay. I'm gonna hit okay. And when I do that, I can close this. And now when I zoom out, Uh, something didn't work right. I still have all of them. So let's do it again. Query builder, MBMG code in QA, QAL, QAO, QAT, close parentheses. Hit test, okay, hit okay, hit okay. All right, now it ran the query. And you can see the only things we have left now are, are these uh, uh, formations that we're interested in, okay? I can right click on this and zoom to layer. That's just gonna focus it. And you can see sort of all the places where we've got this quaternary alluvium in our data set. Now our model's down here. So I don't really wanna include any of this in our model. And you can also see disconnection um, between a lot of these units. So I'm just gonna focus in on all the units that are connected to this bottom layer of quaternary specifically where we're doing our simulation, all right? And now what I wanna do is join them all into a single shape and then export that shape to be our mask. Um, so <clears throat> in QGIS, I can do this uh, in the following way. First, uh, up here in the top bar, there's this arrow with the box and that's select features by area or by a single click. All right, and so what I'm gonna do is select these polygons that I'm interested in, so this big one, all right? And then I'm gonna hold the shift key down and I'm gonna select the other ones I'm interested in. 
and uh, and I want to zoom in on a few things right here because I've done this already. I know there's another one here that I need to select. All right. I don't know why it's mapped differently. Here's another little inlet. I'm going to select some, you know, for whatever reason, that's the way it worked out. Now, if I need to pan over, I've got to change my tool to the pan. I got to move it over and then I got to change my tool back to select. And I'm going to select all these other pieces. All right, so now I've selected all the connected pieces of alluvium and this is gonna be the mask to create my shape file. Um, and I'm gonna, now I'm gonna merge them and, uh, and move to uh, export that merge. Okay, so <clears throat> we've got this, uh, these selected files and, and you know each GIS is going to have different ways to do this. In QGIS, um, what works for this set of shape files is a tool. So up here in, um, in the top, you see these these menus, and one of the menus is vector. So a shape file is what's called a vector data set. That means it's 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 not a picture. It's not a raster two different main kinds of data files in GIS, vector and raster, shape files a vector. So um, under vector, there's a whole bunch of uh, different things we can do. And we're gonna use the geoprocessing tools and we're gonna do what's called a buffer, all right? So we're gonna buffer this and uh, we are going to uh, do the study area geology. Selected features only. 10 meters distance is fine. I actually set it to one meters. It doesn't really matter. Um, 10 meters would mean we would extend the boundaries by 10 meters in all directions. Some, you know, these are probably not mapped to within 10 meters, but uh, let's keep it at one meters. Um, dissolve the result. Okay. And buffered create a temporary file that's okay it'll be called buffered and open the file after running the algorithm all right and uh, i think this will work so let's give it a shot so i'm going to hit run okay so here's the result we have this buffered file it's um subsumed all these other polygons into one they're dissolved and this is our new file all right I can open up the symbology. I really don't like this. I'm gonna see if, what happens when I hit okay. And it sends it away, dang. What's going on there? Somewhere out here in Walla land. All right, I'll be back to uh, figure this out. Let me figure it out. You don't need to be watching me do it. I will resume after I get it figured out. 